Hello, this is Robert Perkins, the Immigration Professor, and welcome to our video on the new Obama DREAM Act, uh, also called Deferred Action. You can see all of our educational videos about immigration topics on our website, which is www.immigration-professor.com, or if you have a specific question about a case, you can call our offices, toll free, 888-439-4560, and we serve people all across the United States and all over the world. So again, welcome to my video about the new Obama Deferred Action. So what I want to do today is to go over what are the criteria for Deferred Action and also explain a little bit about what Deferred Action is. So I'll start with that. Um, deferred Action is actually something that's existed in the law. It's called Deferred Action for quite a while. It actually is used when the government has the ability to deport somebody. Either they entered illegally, or they entered and um, their visas expired, or under some other provision of deportability. But the government doesn't do it for humanitarian reasons. What the president has actually done is that he has defined a class of people uh, who, for whom, as a policy reason, we want to give the privilege of deferred action to. So what is deferred action? Well, a couple of things it's not. Uh, deferred action is not citizenship. It's not a green card. It doesn't give the people the right to be here uh, permanently. Typically, again, deferred action is an act of prosecutorial discretion. And what it does is it gives people, the government saying, we're going to allow you to stay here. And when they do that, uh, the, the current right of deferred action also allows them the right to work. Um, and with the right to work comes the right to get a social security number and, and, and a driver's license and go to college and other things that, um, that are important for people who are living in the society. So even though this is not an amnesty and it's not a green card or a path to citizenship, it does give people some very important and practical rights to go to school, to work, to drive, and all those things which make life good. So, in any event, um, what I want to do now is go over what are the criteria for this particular deferred action. The first criteria is that a person has to arrive in the U.S. before the age of 16. So that's the, num the first criteria, is that they were brought here when they were young. How do we show that criteria? Well, uh, school records would help, transcripts, anything from a school while the person was here under the age of 16 might be helpful. Uh, doctor bills, perhaps, in their name uh, might be helpful. Um, if, for example, uh, uh, a parent had insurance or something like that, and and it listed the child as a dependent, that would be a document um, that could be under the age of 16. Uh, anything with that child's name on it from the United States under the age of 16 might be included in documentation. So that's the first criteria. The second criteria is that the person has to have resided in the U.S. for five years before um, June 15th of 2012, which is the date the president made the announcement. Again, what type of documents um, might help are pretty much the same type of documents. Uh, transcripts, um, diplomas, uh, anything with that, that person's name on it for the five years would be helpful. Uh, affidavits from other people that knows that the person was there, that might be helpful. Perhaps a landlord, perhaps a friend of the family. Um, so those things might be helpful. Uh, tax forms would be helpful. Uh, e even though people are illegally in the United States, many of them do pay taxes, so that would be helpful as well. The third requirement is that the person be in school uh, presently, or be a high school graduate, have a GED, or be an honorably, honorably discharged veteran. So. That's the third requirement. One thing we don't really know is what they mean by in school. Does that have to be a high school or elementary school, or could it be um, some other type of vocational school or other school, even if they don't have a high school degree? The fourth requirement is that the person cannot have a felony, 
which is defined as, uh, you know, something with a term of imprisonment of one year or more, a significant misdemeanor or multiple misdemeanors or otherwise pose a threat to the safety of our society. So uh, the government's going to be publishing reg regulations August 14th of 2012, so that might give us a little bit of um, uh, insight as to what, what, what these things typically mean. Um, the fifth requirement is that the person has to be under the age of 30. One thing the government has indicated, at least to members of the immigration bar, is that the under 30 requirement is under 30 as of uh, June 15, 2012. So if somebody um, is now 31 or 32, 